we are vulnerable and we are a great target for scammers. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Eva, a painter and printmaker specializing in the Scottish landscapes. I felt like it might be useful to maybe talk about the different schemes that unfortunately nowadays exist in order to exploit artists. And of course, generally speaking, scams exist for all types of internet users. And I'm not saying by any means that artists are exclusive victims of scam, but this is an art account, so this is what I'm focusing on. And um, I do think that artists are a very vulnerable target for so many reasons. So let's dive into this. I know it's maybe not the funniest and um, most delightful subject there is, but I do think it is important to raise awareness, generally speaking, so that some of you who are watching this might avoid um, a very unpleasant experience. I wanted to do a deep dive maybe into those scams that I have personally experienced, not in the way that I have fallen victim to them. Fortunately, I was able to <laughs> avoid the worst, but I feel like these are the examples that I can more easily speak for. Now, the first one is the NFT scheme. For a while, this was a real thing, I believe, especially on Instagram, where it was very frequent. I mean, I was contacted like several times a day, every day, with requests like this. So I do think this is a very common thing. So basically what happens is that if you have an art account, people will write you a DM or write in the comments um, something like I love what you are doing, your artwork is absolutely fantastic, but um, could I please buy it as a NFT? I don't know how familiar you are with the whole concept, but NFTs are non-fungible tokens, so something that has no physical component. These are purely digital objects, like images for instance, that are being sold and bought back and forth on specialized platforms that are solely dedicated to, to this purpose. These NFTs are not sold and bought for like classical currency, but for cryptocurrencies. And what you should understand here is that, like in all scams, it all starts with a very legitimate idea or plan or process or whatever. So these platforms do exist. There are a lot of very legitimate sales going on there with real people buying these digital objects and um, some are making money off of it. Others do that for their pleasure. It is another new form of collectibles. And know that there are a lot of brands out there, like really established brands, who are not even particularly specializing in art production. Uh, who are participating. The market does exist, the transactions can be legitimate, this is not where it all goes wrong. And of course, if you are interested in selling your artwork as an NFT, uh, there are different platforms where you can absolutely do that. Uh, what you have to do is to take a photograph, for instance, of your painting, if you are a painter, upload it on the platform. Of course, you have to have an account and I won't go into detail, I just want to tell you that you can absolutely do it in a legitimate way, uh, you can earn money off of it, just keep in mind that it will be cryptocurrency that needs to be transformed one way and another, so you have to have a, like a digital wallet, be it as it may. Where the scam starts is that most of the time the scammers are targeting people who are not in the market in order to kind of lure them into it because what they will do is they will show their appreciation for what you are doing, offering you a lot of money, most of the time even more than you are selling your artwork for on your website or Etsy or whatever, to lure you into that and um, try to make you look 
unreasonable. Whenever I told people off, like telling them, you know, I'm not into NFT, period, they're like, but, but, but why? This is totally legit and I'm offering a lot of money. What you do is so great. Why wouldn't you want to earn some money off of it? You know, this type of psychological manipulation. Where this becomes a scam is that they would tell you on which platform you should best sell your artwork as an NFT and incite you to create an account. But the thing is, in order to sell something off of those platforms, you need to create a digital wallet, as I told you. And in order to do so, you have to kind of mine those um, cryptocurrencies and what results out of it is, I believe it is called gas fee. So basically, the fee that you are paying for the energy uh, like electricity and stuff like that that you use in order to mine this cryptocurrency and this is the fee that you would have to pay on those platforms the thing is most legitimate platforms don't make you pay any fees and this is where where it goes wrong actually because they consciously reroute you from those legit platforms to platforms that are well let's say less so that will pump your money out of you and then there will be no sale and um, you are just stuck with the fee that you have would have paid. And it is funny because at the beginning I didn't quite understand what the scam here was because I knew that NFT sale is a legitimate thing so I was like but how can this go wrong? I mean I read quite a lot about it and I did create an account on an NFT sale and buy website just for the fun of it and I was like maybe it will work, who knows, I mean I don't see why and how but I want to try something out and it might be fun and I tried um, scamming the scammers because the next time someone wrote to me on Instagram like oh I would so love to purchase your artwork um, as an NFT and I was like yeah great there you go here it is here's the link you can um, you can buy to your heart's content and um, we will see <laughs> what will happen here and they were like oh no but this platform it only goes to those and those clients and it's really not a good thing and stuff like that and I was like okay I see where you're going um, so yeah this this was a fun experience just know that never never create an account to sell nfts through a link that you are invited to either do it on your own and give it a try or you know just don't go into that now the next scam i'm not sure about how it works exactly but i would want to make you aware of that this is an etsy scam it's been a while since I received very suspicious messages of this type. So I do believe the platform has taken care of it. But if this is not the case, I'd rather you, you would know. So what happened a lot was that a while ago I received quite a lot of DMs from people on Etsy telling me that they wanted to purchase this or that item off of my Etsy catalogue and they have it in their shopping cart but they are unable to follow through with the sale because the platform is asking them for the seller's email address and the first time I was like um, this is strange because I am not only an Etsy seller I have also bought stuff off of Etsy myself so I know for a fact that this is not the case so I started asking questions and um, trying to be helpful actually in order to be sure that the person is following the usual process and then they kind of stopped answering me or you know went back to no no the platform is absolutely asking for your email address and um, then I started noticing that their accounts disappeared three or four days later so I didn't give it any more thought 
but then this kept happening to me so I started answering like I know for a fact that this is not the case but um, if you need any more information on the item that you're interested in do feel free to reach out and I will help you out. I'm unsure as to what the scheme exactly is behind all of this. What I can imagine is it being a kind of operation where people are looking for your personal information like data maybe in order to hack into your Etsy account. It's unclear. Just be aware that in our day and age your personal information, your data is as valuable as any tangible real items. Um, this is money, this can be used in order to hack into all types of accounts, this can be used in order to be sold as information to third parties. Be aware of that and be very precious with your data, don't give it away and especially don't give it away to scammers. The third scamming scheme is in my opinion a very 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 common one. So what happened to me is a while back I received an email from Barber and um, they offered a collaboration where they would send me items uh, free of cost every month and I would then promote them on my Instagram account. And this is what really bothers me maybe the most in those schemes is that they are feeding into your wishes and dreams and stuff that you like because I love Barber and I do think that their clothes are really the best to venture outside. Uh, they're really very practical, they're beautiful. So obviously when a brand that you worship contacts you, all common sense goes out the window in the first moment and only maybe at the end of the email are you thinking but this is so incredibly unlikely that a huge brand like this would consider this a good deal because if you don't have a huge following and therefore don't have an enormous reach it would not be good business. With this in mind I had to go through the email like several times because it was quite well done. They even insert the copyright at the bottom with the name of the brand and only if you click on the details and um, have the sender email address clearly shown that you can identify this type of thing as a scam because obviously this was not sent through the official email with a barber domain in it so something something at barber.com but it was a Google Mail account and obviously no serious brand would use a generic Gmail domain at the very least it would have created their own so the devil is in the details and this is what you should look out for because these guys are getting better at the minute they recreate websites and platforms that look exactly the same as the real legitimate thing so you have to be really really careful what you are clicking on who you're answering to online so for those kinds of promotional emails that offer you like great deals on collaborations or partnerships or stuff like that um, my recommendation would be to first check out the sender email account. So if you are an artist and a huge brand or any brand at all actually offers you a partnership where they will promote your designs or include them in their articles, in their clothing or mugs or whatnot, if this deal looks too good to be true it probably is. Now the fourth and last scam scheme that I thought of is maybe not exactly a scam per se in itself. Um, it's just not really a deal that I would recommend you following through with because I'm not sure it's in the best interest of the artists. And these are so-called vanity galleries. Now if you are not familiar with this term 
this is a certain type of gallery that would demand a very high fee for you to participate in some open calls contest in order to be to gain the right in a way to be exhibited at this specific gallery. As you might know, galleries, when they are in search for a new artist to exhibit or to discover, you know, um, they are not usually taking money for participation because it is part of their job to be on the hunt for the new shiny thing, for the new talent, for the artist that is going to be so successful that he is going to earn some money and also bringing a huge amount to the gallery. This is part of their job, so you should not be paying for that. I know that a lot of online galleries do it this way and this is the process that they are opting for because it's more fail-safe, it's earning them money, so I'm not saying that any gallery where you have to pay a fee to exhibit is in itself a bad idea. When exhibitions are organized, uh, there are costs involved in this process, so I get that in a way, especially the smaller establishments, do have to make it more fail-safe and um, have some extra security, some extra financial security. But you have to be extra careful in cases like this because a typical vanity gallery, and this is what really is so problematic, they will not do their job through the entirety of the process because the typical vanity gallery is not here to earn you money nor to earn money from the sales. What they do typically is they're earning money off of those participation fees. So they would include a ton of different artists on regular open calls in order to collect the participation fee from as many artists as they can. And this is how they finance themselves. This is their major source of income. And this is where it gets really problematic because obviously even if you were to succeed and they, you are selected, they won't help you find the collectors because they already you know close their accounts with only the participation fee so there is no incentive for them um, to be recommending your work to promoting your work and therefore it is very unlikely that you will have real sales in these kinds of constructions although this is like the core activity of the gallery, this is why you know you split your income, this is why they take commission, is that you have an artist that collaborates in a way with an infrastructure that has the collectors, that is established, that has the location, that can exhibit, physically exhibit your artwork, and those two, when they come together in a productive way, this is what creates good business. Of course, in the case of those vanity galleries, if they are not interested in creating this infrastructure, this would be a one-way street for the artist. So I would definitely not recommend you falling into those business relationships. So whenever you decide to take part in a open call and you have to pay a fee and things like that, I'm just saying that be, be very careful and be sure that you do the research beforehand and that there are no bad surprises and that make sure, try to find out whether it's really just a participation fee or whether, or whether this is their main source of income. It is not always easy to find out online but I think it's better to take a little time and dig deep in order to prevent yourself falling into really unpleasant situations. Now, this made me think more generally about the situation that independent artists find themselves in. Because basically what we have is, even in our day and age, a artist that is 
not isolated but really dependent on a bunch of things that are completely out of his control and that are preventing him and her from expressing their art in a free way and making good business. Of course initially what we had was a relationship of dependency from galleries before the internet and social media and all of this. If you wanted to sell your art you basically didn't have any other choice than to find a gallery that was willing to work with you and exhibit your work and um, either it worked out well and then you kept this relationship going and your work sold well because this partnership made sense or it didn't and the gallery moved on to another artist you had to go out on yourself and look for another gallery because this was the only way of putting your work out there. Now times have changed but maybe not as much as we would like because of course this infrastructure let's say of galleries still exists but what I regret is that there's a lot of gatekeeping involved in this, especially because galleries are, I believe, feeling threatened by different other platforms, online platforms, online galleries, websites that give different artists the opportunity of promoting their work in a different way without having to reach out to galleries. They are kind of even more gatekeeping and there's a real separation in the perception of the quality of artists and artworks exhibited at a, at a classical gallery and all the rest. So they are accentuating this and the separation between the quality and um, the secure investment maybe of in buying an artwork from a gallery versus buying it off of the internet. So this is creating a divide. Then on the other hand um, you have all of those platforms that help you sell your art like Etsy comes to mind and they are taking quite a huge commission for the service that they are offering because unlike the gallery there is no physical space involved in Etsy services, right? They are not giving you a great gallery at a great placement in a bigger city where you are more likely to sell your artwork. They are simply giving you the digital infrastructure where you can put out your work if you are unwilling or unable to create your own website. But 20% off of the sales seems quite a big amount for the service that they are giving you, right? If you think about it. Then there's also all sorts of sponsored content on Etsy as well. So you can pay Etsy in order to promote further your artwork. So this is again costing you something. And I'm not saying that you're unable to find the, the fine line between worth the investment and not worth the investment. So you can invest in um, sponsored content quite successfully I believe on Etsy and doing sales that are more important and not only covering your expenses uh, but also earning you money. However you have to keep in mind that you are still dependent on the, on the algorithm of Etsy on those commissions on whether or not you want to pay some money for, for publicity in order to pop up in all those searches on Etsy, right? So you are not completely independent neither through those types of platforms and Etsy is not the only one. I mean, there are tons out there that are more art or painting specific that are also rather, rather gatekeepy as well. Um, while still not having a physical space and not being gallery and you know not having um, the long-standing relationship to clients and then finally you of course have the option of creating your own website and taking matters into your own hands the problem is once again in our day and age 
There are so many different businesses that have been created since the invention of the internet that basically the place is jammed full with different brands. Well, basically all those search engines and let's face it, the only major one is Google. They came up with the concept where you could pay the platform in order to promote your search results, right? So once again, it is an illusion to believe that you are an independent agent here, right? Because if you want your website to be well referenced on Google, and by reference I mean like not appearing on the 10th search page, right? Um, but somewhere in the beginning, in order for people to see it, you once again have to pay money. So however you look at it, as an artist, you are obviously in every one of those different options dependent on someone, be it the gallery, be it Etsy, be it Google, but it is an illusion of thinking that you are completely self-sufficient and can manage your, your business and make art a steady work without factoring in all of those different things. Why do I tell you that? Is that the position artists are currently in is still quite vulnerable. Progress has been made, of course, but we still have to count on third-party services in order to make it all work. We are vulnerable and we are a great target for scammers. So my conclusion here would be not only for you to be wary and watchful in order to not become a scammer's victim, but also if you are on the other side of like the situation and you are a collector or you would want to purchase art, please keep all this in mind. And um, if you value the different artists and the artwork that they're producing, please take into consideration ordering the artwork directly from the artist. It is actions like that that are really helping us out here and helping us create a more stable and secure position for artists, which is of course a very important basis for us to be serene and um, really productive in our artwork. And this is not me saying like never go on Etsy ever again. I'm just saying be aware of all of this and um, be mindful in the way that you are using those platforms. I, for instance, would recommend that you use Etsy as a search engine because it is a great place that is referencing a lot of creatives in one place. So this is a very practical tool, but in my opinion, it should stay a tool and not a third party service in that it weighs so much in this equation, right? So if you find an artist on Etsy, my advice would be to check whether the, the artist that you're liking has a known website and then purchasing what he's offering on Etsy through his own website. This really helps everyone here gaining the independence that artists are so desperately in need of in order to be creative and productive and serene in their production. I hope this was not a too heavy subject but it felt like an important one to get off my chest so I wanted to put things in a bigger perspective because it's in my opinion it's not enough to tell you that there are scammers out there and be watchful and these are the scams I also want to help make it a safer place as well and um, helping gain an overall consciousness of what is happening out there and what it is like to be an artist that is trying to make it up there Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video very soon. Have a lovely morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are.